Oh, shalom. Shalom, Rastasari. Greetings, Shabbat Shalom, Sanbet Salam. Okay, this is the 40. This is the. Why well, I said 40 right there? Uh, this is the 40. Well, this is 40 years later. This is like 40 years. Civil rights, 40 years. Interesting, if you look back to 1962. You understand, 1962, 2012. But this reading actually is the 21st, number 40. Well, number 40 is significant prophetically. In fact, let's just take a quick look at numbers. You know, you know, hear about a lot about so called Illuminati numbers and, you know, New World Order and Freemasonic, you know, number equations. But there are also scriptural, biblical number equations. And we're going to take a, a quick scan of this document right here. You can look it up on the Internet, biblical numbers or meanings from a biblical, scriptural perspective, right? So let's go down here. We have number 40. Some would call it Freudian, but um, Freud... Freud he wasn't a fraud, but he was talking about European psychology. You understand overall. But black people who live in the image of the beast, they fall prey to that. So you see right here, 40. See number 40. Just working along with this, 40 equals trials, probation, testing. See, this is what the lost sheep, the lost black sheep, black people, black folks in the Americas and the Caribbean have been going through for the past 40 years. The past 40 years has been a time of trials, probation, testing, stopping the rise of the black Messiah. You know what I'm saying? Really stopping the rise in the consciousness of Christ and his kingly character of Ketamawi, Haile Selassie, of our our half of the story, or that half of the story, our Ethiopian Hebrew part of the story, the whole link you understand between us here in the diaspora and and the and the royals our black royalty at home has been divided and and conquered in a sense for a time but this 40 year is interesting 40 is trials probation testings right keep this in mind the number 40 is trials probation testings All right now this Reading here is the 21st in our Torah readings. And here, if you look at the number 21 here, right? And this is biblical numbers. This is, this is scriptural numbers, the science. Now, you might notice that these numbers, Satan, Yetaregame Yehun, or the enemy, the, the adversary of the black messiah, the adversary of God and Christ, also uses number numbers in their lunar nutty system. You understand in their so called Freemasonic system. So they use God's numbers. They try to use the things of God against God. See, you have to recognize that the black man was created in the image and that's the likeness of God. But because of that fall from his God consciousness and that obedience to the spirit and the truth and getting caught up by worldly material things, here's where we're at right now, the 21st Torah portion reading and feeding, which is known as Ki Tissa, Ki Tissa. Now, it's interesting right here, it's exceeding sinfulness of sin, the 21st. Now, if you look at 20, which is last week's um, Sabbath, Shabbat reading and feeding, what is interesting, let's get our scriptures right here, that the last or the previous, the previous week's reading and feeding was um, Tetzave, Tetzave, thou shalt command. Then we have Teruma. And if you look at the numbers, you have, we have 18 was bondage. Remember the Israelawi on the Israelites, the black Jews coming out of Egypt. Now, some folks don't recognize that the Egyptians were black and the Israelites were black. So when we recognize that, we can recognize that there is such a thing as black-on-black -black crime. That's what that was about. So let's overstand things before 
how to make a slave and slick woolly lynches. And this is what being born again really is about, is seeing things in the true light. That means that if a black man is a criminal against God and the king of kings, he's a criminal. Even if he's black, he could be, he could be blue-black. You understand? But unfortunately, he's not blue in his character. You understand? As, as the blue Jesus. In other words, that blue is that heavenly color. That means he's not heavily in his reflection, but he is, he is evil in his reflection. So we have to recognize this. This is a re really important point, racially speaking. But anyway, that point being as it is, so these numbers right here are very interesting. From bondage, we have victory, bondage, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Now compare this, these biblical numbers and the overstanding of these numbers to the Torah portion readings and feeding. So we come up to redemption last week, redemption from bondage, faith, from victory to bondage, right, to faith, to redemption. Now we're at exceeding sinfulness of sin. So let's overstand this. And this is where we begin off with this. We want to touch on actually Oscar, how, how the so-called Oscar, Martin Oscar, is a spiritual Egypt in this time, in Babylon, is a spiritual Egyptianization of Ptah or Fitah, of Ptah in, in principle. Now, we're going to get into that particular teaching um, they go into a little bit of detail, but we're just flashing this right now, and the main connection we want to start off on is this part right here, this this golden calf. Now, this right here is a more authentic image of the, the golden calf. Let's remember it's a calf. A calf is a what? It's a baby. It's a baby cow. You understand the golden calf. Now, how do we get up to this? Well, we begin off this particular Torah portion reading and feeding from chapter 30, from chapter 30, um, verse 11 to chapter 34, verse 35. So, ki tisa, what does ki tisa mean? So, let's go right here. Let's bring this up. Ki tisa, what does ki tisa, ki tisa mean? So, we have to go to chapter 30. Let's get to chapter 30, right here, chapter 30. Verse 11, right? Chapter 30, go to verse 11. Now, this is this word program, and brothers and sisters, be a little patient. Fine, now we're going to upload this free program so you can download this. This is um, the word software. And as you see, we have it open here for, you know, for a cross section of um, study right here from the strong concordance so we can break down you can break down those words right there so here we are in chapter 30 let's go to verse 11 all right here we go right here it says um it says and the lord yahweh and he spake the bar to moses moshe saying amar right he says right here when thou takest the sum, when thou takest the sum, when thou takest the sum, the key tissa, when thou takest the sum, the rosh, the head count, of the children, the bane, the bani, Yisrael, after their number, their pakad, then shall they give Natan, every man, every ish, a what? A kopa or a kofer, a ransom, like Yom Kippur, a ransom or atonement for his, for his soul, his nefesh, his nefs, to Yahweh, when thou numberest, pakad, them, then that that there be no what plague, there be no negaf, no negaf. Now it's interesting if you look at the bottom. It says a trip, right? A trip. It says of the foot. So the plague there, when we look at the first word, the Hebraic, it says down here. It says it be no negaf. You see this word right here, negaf. Now negaf, it has a trip of the foot, as a trip, in the sense someone tripped, 
see you next fall. You understand? Second, figuratively, an affliction of a disease, a plague, or a stumbling. Uh, so there was to be a ransom taken. We're going to learn about this. When it says thou among them, when, when thou numberest, when thou picard them, right, picard to visit with friendly or hostile intent. So when thou what numberest them, but it has the idea of a visitation. You understand? Now, remember, 40 years. 40 years is very, very significant. So how does all this connect with this Torah portion, reading and feeding? So we have to begin here with Moses, right? Moses receiving, not just receiving the commands, but he is the one. It's through him, through that black man, Moshe, that the black Hebes, the black Hebrews were able to come out of Egypt which was ruled by black people, too. It's just like right now we look at the black man situation in America, we think it's just a white man, but really we have a lot of our own so-called black folks, you understand, who have sold their soul to the devil. You understand? So we think that they're about what we're about, but they're not. But they go along with the movement, too. This is exactly what we're going to find out in this Torah portion, Reading and Feeding, was the situation and was what was going on. So let's get an overview. Kitissa, 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 Hebrew for when you take. It's the six and the seventh words and the first distinctive words in the kufl, in this portion, which is the 21st weekly Torah portion, our orit, uh, kufl, our minbab, the reading, in our annual Hebraic cycle of Torah readings. And it's the ninth in this book, which is the book of Exodus, the book of coming out. As the Bible says, come out of her, my people. And it constitutes Exodus chapter 30, verse 11, to Exodus chapter 34, verse 35. And we as black Jews here in the diaspora in the North Country, we read it in the 21st Senbet Shabbat after the Simchat Torah, generally in late February or March. Now, this year, 2012, it's March 10th, March 10th, right? Now, the black Jews and others, other Jews, faithful ones who are, who are not, like I would say, the Illuminati Jews, but more of those who are into the Torah and are seeking to give a divine favor, which is a, which is a portion of them, not all of them, unfortunately. But they read, and we read the first part of the Parsha, which means the kufl or portion, Exodus chapter 30, verse 11 to verse 16, regarding the half shekel, the half shekel head tax. Now, a shekel is a particular um, monetary monetary weight, you understand, a monetary weight. So what they, what they basically give is half of that, you understand, half of that. Now, it's, it's kind of important that we understand this when we look at our own system. This is our own system. This is sovereignty. When we speak about sovereignty, Torah, you understand, and the Kal Kidan, the covenant is sovereignty. So regarding the half shekel head tax, and also there's a Maftir, um, Torah reading on the special Shabbat. There's a special Senbet, special Sabbath, which is known as Shabbat Shekalim. You understand? Um, March 4th, it was two, 2011, and it's read with the Padasha, uh Pekude. And this year, this year was February 17th, 2012, and it's read with the Padasha Mishpatim, which, which is the, um, the judgment. Um, February 9th, 2013, it will also be read with Mishpatim. So we have two judgment Sabbaths this year and the year to come. And in March 1st, 2014, it's once again read with uh, Pekude, which is a Torah portion reading, actually the last Torah portion um, reading in the, book of, in the book of Exodus. Now, we as black Jews, black Hebrews, elect Rastafari, we also read parts of this, of the, of the Parsha, addressing the intercession of Moses. Moses, he interceded because of, 
because of the Beit Israel. And when we recognize, well, who are the Beit Israel? And we identify them with this lost sheep, these black people, we can then see the realism of this story and the realism of their, of their chatiyat, their sin, and the real, realism of the intercession of Musa on their behalf because he interceded and ha Elohim, the true God, had mercy. Exodus chapter 32, verse 11 to verse 14, and uh, Exodus chapter 34, verse 1 to 10. As the Torah readings on the fast days of the 10th of um, Tevet, and the fast of, of, of Esther, and the 17th of Tammuz, and the fast of uh, Gedalia. Now, these are, all, these are all parts of our culture and history and heritage and also of, of, of our way of life. So take a note of it, and we'll go through these as, as the opportunity arises. Just, it's just to point out that this is a very important portion for many different holy days because what it points out, as we pointed to in the numbering, when we look at that numbering again, let's bring this numbering up. Again, when we look at this numbering, we see that 21st is exceeding sinfulness of sin. You know what I'm Not just that people make mistakes, but the exceeding sin, knowing what they knew, the Beta Israel, knowing what they knew, like black folks even today, before this Luna Nutty business and everything, knowing what they know, that they will still do what they do. You understand, and we keep seeing these connections. We keep seeing them, you know, out of the horse's mouths, the pale horse's mouth. We get these testimonies, right? Um, but also we have other other prayers, other like the evening, afternoon, minka prayer service on the Tisha B'Av. Uh, we as Hebrews, we read another part of this, this, this portion, Exodus 34, verse 1 to 26, which addresses the three pilgrim festivals or the Shalosh Regalim or Salase Regalim, the three pilgrim festivals. As the initial Torah reading on the third intermediate day, the Hol HaMa'od of Fasika or Passover. So this is the, the intermediate days on Passover and on that, on that initial, you understand, you know, the initial part of this Torah reading is read on the third day the third intermediate day between the beginning and the end of Fasika. Now, we as Hebrews, black Jews, also read a larger section from the same part of this, um, of this kufl, of this portion, Exodus 33, verse 12 to Exodus 34, 26, as the initial Torah reading on a Sabbath that falls on one of the intermediate days of Passover, or Sukkot. So during these holy days, which are really um, two, in a sense, of the, the three pilgrim festivals. See, ideally speaking, ideally speaking, we are to make pilgrimage at these times, if possible, yeah, at least one of these times. You know what I'm saying? So when we practice our way of life in spirit and in truth, we'll see the sovereignty of God. So we learn of these things, but then when we do it, then we really know it. You understand? So we learn of it. To, we first get informed, you understand? And then we get involved. Or so we get informed, and then we get active about it. But first is the instruction. First is the education. You know, there's a lot of these guys running around here talking about, oh, this was confirming you. You know, you don't have to get educated about it, or so forth and so on. Watch those games. Now, the golden calf is, is, is an important part of this. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut to the chase a little bit. You understand? Cut to the chase a little bit. We're going to go to the golden calf, the, gold, the particular golden calf section. So let's bring this down, and let's go back to um, Patah. Right, pata here, and we was mentioning that um, pata is where you get your Oscar from, and when you start to break down the the essential meanings of pata, you will get to see how pata, you understand, which you can see it it looks just like, I mean, check it out for yourself, check it out for yourself. This is where this is where your Oscar, this is where Oscar gets his origin from. And when we break it down a little bit further, we can even see how for a lot of these ones and ones, you understand that either 
have sold their soul more or less, you know, getting into, you know, the system of things, you know. They, they tell you they'll do anything for this golden statue. Now, I know this, this same golden statue, this is what is coveted. You know saying? This is what is coveted today. You know what saying? Among those who are in that particular business. And, of course, they have different awards now for different sort of businesses, but we'll see that all of this originates out of ancient Egypt in principle, in spirit, and in truth. Now, what we have here is a likeness of the golden of the golden calf that the Israelites, you know what I'm saying, that the Israelites um, went after. So let's get deal with the scripture. Let's bring this over on the side. We'll return to this right here in due course. Okay, here's uh, some, some, we're going to use the Eurocentric drawings, but then uh, after all, these people over here are living in the image of white folks anyway. So why, why they choose to live in the image of those white folks and not these white folks, but really they're living in the image of the beast anyway. And we can see that even though these original people were black people, you know, and you can see what was wrong with them is the same thing that's going on in this spiritual Egypt today. So let's deal with the scripture on this, right? This golden calf. And when we turn our Bibles to Exodus, uh, Exodus um, chapter thirty, chapter thirty. Uh, let's see, chapter thirty. Let's begin with thirty, thirty, um, thirty, and eleven for a moment. Because thirty and eleven says right here. Who may worship in the skull field? It's the redeemed. Now, that's connecting with uh, the half shekel from verses 11 to 16. Then we go to Hebrew, I mean, go to uh, Exodus chapter, chapter, chap, same chapter 30, verse 17. Who may worship is continued, and it speaks about the cleansed. The cleansed, right? Those who are, those who are cleansed. Right? And then as we go forward, it speaks about after the cleansing, which is the washing, which is symbolic of the baptism or symbolic of the bathing. Now, spiritually speaking, in New Testament in Christ, in the Moshiach, that bathing is the washing with water as the word. The, the word is what cleanses us. You understand from that scripture that speaks such, you know, it's the word. It's the washing in, in the in the and cleansing by the water of the word that really prepares us, prepares really our hearts and our minds, our consciences. So we know that the outer water, the outer baptism, it is a, it is a symbol, you understand, and where possible, yes, one should be symbolically and physically bathed and symbolically baptized. But the real process of coming to our Christhood or, or Messiahhood, or, which is to say our, our right of admission as sons, not as slaves of sin or slaves of Babylon, but as sons is through that being born again and having our consciences, you understand, um, purified. And see, so it can all be purified by reflecting, you understand, as looking at the law, the Torah, in that sense, or looking at Scripture as looking at a mirror. You understand, so we can recognize what sorts of people we really are. Not to be like those who, who, who worship, you understand, false images and go after bling bling and go after Babylon. You see, they're having a lot of psychological breakdowns. They're very maladjusted. Even though you may say, oh, look, they got money. Yeah, they got money, but what do they have to do for that money? And what we see within the condition of the lost sheep, the so-called Negro, is almost one and the same thing that we see in this Torah portion concerning the golden calf. This is why we wanted to get right into this, but the lead-up in this Torah portion does provide a good overview. So hopefully you have the Schofield Study Bible, as we mentioned before, and we'll mention again. We have that at our website, www.loj Society. One can go there and download it for free, and they can utilize it 
you know, utilize it on their mobile device, their computer, and so forth, and so on. So the, the, the beginning is the word. You see what I'm saying? is washing by the water, washing by the word like water. You know, washing by, by the word like water. Let's get that scripture. Let's just bring up that scripture for a moment. And here's this one. This this program here is really. We hope to upload this, upload this ASAP, very, very soon. Um, so let's put word right here, and let's put water. Because I want you to check it out and see it on the screen. You understand? I think it's right here, Ephesians 5:25. So you can just see the connection. With you see what it says right here. It says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. You understand? With the washing of water by the word, by way of the word. So as water cleans, in that sense, you'll send the body or that which is dirty, but in speaking of the body, like physical bathing, baptism cleans the body. You understand? It's that word that also, you understand? So we have, we have water, you understand, being a symbol of what, and what the water does in its way. The word is to do for, for our spirit, our spiritual body, and to do for our, our psychical, you understand, body, our psychical mind state. So this scripture here, Ephesians 5 and, and 26, is very important. The reason why we touched on that, is because when we look at this Torah portion, we follow this Torah portion, um, Ki Tissa, the 21st Torah portion, reading and feeding. When we follow it carefully, we see that it begins with Exodus chapter 30. Exodus chapter 30, verse 11. And, and the Schofield uh, uh, Study Bible, Reference Bible, breaks this down pretty, pretty well right here. Because as it speaks about, well, who has a... What, who has a, a right, you understand, who has a right towards this, this worship? Remember, in the first part of this chapter, which was the last part of last Sabbath reading and feeding and study, and we apologized about not being able to get into more of the, the elements of it, just like we're focusing right now on the golden calf, because I think it teaches us a very, very, important lesson. In fact, let us bring this up as another site sample so you can hopefully be able to connect, you understand, the so-called modern, the modern examples in the same way of this very same golden calf. We're going to open up this one right here. All right. Isn't this interesting? Isn't this really interesting right here? On one side, you see Orset or Isis. Now, it's interesting because in the same way that when we study even ancient Egypt, most of these gods and goddesses and other types go back to earlier original types. You see what I'm saying? It's almost like when we look at so-called Jesus, we recognize that the true Jesus, or really Joshua, Yahshua, Yeshua, was a woolly-haired black man. You understand? In Judea, so forth, born to a black mother. You understand? This then Glamardium. But then as we see this type now continue over 1,600 to almost 2,000 years, it gets whitewashed, it gets perverted, it gets watered down. So if one looks at the modern so-called Jesus mythology, you understand? One sees really a folly and a corruption of what the true type and the earlier type was. So we get the very same things going on here in Egypt, just like the golden calf thing. The golden calf represented an earlier type of worship. It's like going backward instead of forward. And we see this very same thing with black people today. So we see here Isis and Whitney Houston. She's a, a type of a golden calf. You understand, especially for those who are profiting off of her music, who know in their industry that she is she is worth more to them dead, you understand, than alive. You understand, you heard about how they raised her prices on her music less than a half an hour after she was dead. But now when you look at this picture here, how symbolically 
You understand? It echoes, you understand, one another. You understand? Even the stance. You know what I'm saying? Even the dress type, there's a dress she wears later on. And you know that they, they, this is what a lot of these so-called spiritual Egyptians, Sodom and Gomorrahites, you know, they worship, they take these types and superimpose their satanic ideas. Even though the original types of this were true types. Let's understand that. The original type of that was a true type. Like, for example, if we look at a calf. You understand? If we look at a calf for a moment, a calf is a true type. You understand? It's one of God's creatures. You understand? It's meant to serve a particular role or a function. But now, when you exalt this type, you understand, to the point of being greater than the very creator, you understand? That right there is the height of folly. You understand? That right there is the height of folly. And this is what we're learning about in this Torah portion. But more importantly, it's what we're seeing in this present time, 2012, when we look at the condition of the lost sheep of black folks and the whole bling bling and the ibob, the hip hop, the hip hop, the ibob. You understand? The worship that's going on today, the, the serpent on the stick, the proverbial serpent on the stick or the dollar sign, in other words. So, when we look at this Torah portion, reading and feeding, it begins off, the chapter actually begins off, chapter 30, with the altar of incense, right, the altar of ancients, and it's called the Great Worship Chapter. This portion, Kitissa, the 20, the 20, uh, first portion, this is Bamarinya, let's just go to the Amharic of this, here, here we have the Amharic right here, and below Tanagaro, and the sustainer spake to Moses, saying, Ante, Ante ye Israel, Ante ye Israelim, ye Israelin, Lijocha Kuter, Tekeble, receive the number of the children of Israel. The Kuter Hacho Gize, Mek a Sefit, and die hon bacho, so that a plague, remember what we read the ne- was negaf, so that, so that a trip, a, a trip, they won't go through a trip. Black people have been going through a trip for 40 years since the stopping of the rise of the black Messiah consciousness, a trip. You understand? So much so now that one's not looking for the Messiah, you understand? But they're looking now to be God. You know what I'm saying? These these ones looking to be God, not not the Son of God, but to be God. And in the time that you you number them, right? Now there's a very important reason for that because this is in the section that's called Who May Worship. Who is it that may worship? That they have to give that atonement, that that redemption money, that half a shekel. You understand the redeemed. Now, what is interesting about this chapter, right, is that now that portion is going to break down exactly how that go in. As it says in verse 15, the rich shall not give more, and the poor shall not give less than half a shekel when they give an offering to a Gizyabia. See, it was strictly set how much they would give, and it was something that rich and poor could afford. It's not like nowadays if you're in some of these counterfeit Jehovah worships, you know, if you don't give a lot of money, they want to know how much you make, and they want to tax you like they're a second IRS or something like that. Why they're not even doing the master's true bidding? You understand? They've already developed their own kind of spin, you understand, on the Bible. They're not teaching you this. Otherwise, you would know this, and we can move on to other things. But the rich shall not give more, and the poor shall not give less than half a shekel when they give an offering. Then it goes on in verse 16, And thou shalt take the atonement money of the Bani Yisrael, of the children of Israel, and shall appoint it for the service of the tabernacle. In other words, there was a purpose you understand there was a purpose in those monies, you understand, being for the service of the tabernacle. Let's see if we could bring up 
bring up a picture of the tabernacle. We had it over here. You understand? Hold this and look at Moses. We'll get back into the, you know, we'll get back into the calf. You understand? We'll see how how impatient, just like today, the folks are very, very impatient, modish, and in their impatience, they have gone back, you understand, into, into Babylon. They've gone back into spiritual Egypt, you know, and you listen to some of their old tunes, and you thought they were really righteous, you understand, but now you see them, rep you know, representing Antichrist, and they're not even talking about Christ. They're talking about, like, they are greater you understand than Christ. Like they are gods, and they never built the heavens nor the earth. They barely can get their selves or their people out of captivity. You know what I'm saying? But this is the very same thing that was going on. You know what I'm saying? We'll find out in this particular portion. Let's get the tabernacle here. These are some other. It was on the Nebuchadnezzar and, and, and these other parts right here. Let's, okay, this is, this is uh, the Ethiopian princess. Right there. Okay, this is part of Esther. We wanted to get that tabernacle, that tabernacle picture, so you can understand and understand how all these things really, how all these things are connected. It's important to see how all these things are, are connected, and to see how the tabernacle, you understand, was the center of the worship. So it was already set. They were already being given sovereignty. It was all being brought out gradually, just like this people were. But some have gotten impatient with with Yahweh, with Jah's way, and now we see all of them going about to set their own way. You understand? We sound a lot a lot like what the devil was doing. You know, were saying already to us, but now they come like our overseers. So it's very interesting, my brothers and sisters, when you when you take a stock, you know, when you take a stock of this. But let's let's bring up. Let's bring this up here, because um, getting all these lined up for you, these are the word pictures, so that you can really see a, a representation, a representation of this. Well, this is this is one version. It's kind of a black and white version, but I think it it pretty well it pretty well describes more or less very, very humble. You know, and there's one that has some colors to it that might be a little more a little more. Um, descriptive, you know what I'm saying, a little bit more descriptive for the eyes. I think it was in, in which portion right here? Let's go back up here. Um, Taruma, it was either Taruma or Tezave. All right, here's some of the pictures from the, here we go. Here we go. This, this one, a fairly recent computer-generated one. So when it says for the service of the tabernacle, you know we touched on the furniture of the tabernacle. You know, and then people don't want to, you know, people looking for all kind of ways out of Babylon and don't really recognize what what Jah has give us, given us. Because it doesn't seem, you know, they have to, in a sense, go back and and bring with them that which we should have already left behind. And this is what we get to see a lot with this 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 going backward of the people, but remember what 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 happened to the Israelites. You understand the very same thing. So remember that who may worship, therefore who who has brought forward the appropriate not just the offering, but the appropriate heart and the mind. You know, for this for this particular for this particular forward movement. And thou shalt take the atonement money of the children of Israel and shall appoint it for the service of the tabernacle of the congregation, that it may be a what? A memorial, a remembrance to the children of Israel before Yahweh to make an atonement for your souls. Now, when Yahweh don't remember you, you understand because you never remembered him. And notice what we remember even in the commandment. We're told to what? Remember the Sabbath day. It's a minor thing, right? It's a minor thing. What is it, 25 hours? You understand? I mean, if you want to be a little technical about it, 25 hours. But see, during that time, the devil has you going out to the clubs. You understand? Partying, fornicating, forgetting him. So there's no remembrance, you understand, of you in, in Josh's tabernacle. 
And and don't even mention these counterfeit Jehovah worships you want to call a church. You know what I'm saying? That doesn't even qualify. It's like what, what the white sheriff said to, to Martin Lucifer King. He said, boy, your prayers ain't going higher than your head. Mm-hmm. His prayers wasn't going any higher than his head. You know what I'm saying? Because they know that even Jesus is black, but they'll talk about it, but they don't want to put a picture up there because it might offend somebody. You understand? And, and that just shows you if it's the, the little simple obvious things, the little obvious truths that they avoid, then what about that which is not so obvious? What about that which is in the details? But be that as it may, the purpose of the shekel, mm -hmm, the purpose of the shekel was for the atonement money as a remembrance, as a remembrance. You know what I'm saying? As, as, as a simple remembrance. Now, what's interesting is when Jah talks about money, you know what I'm saying? People have a problem with it. You know what I mean? People have a big problem with it. Half a shekel. Let's say a shekel was, was a dollar's worth of silver. Think about it today. A dollar's worth of silver, because shekel is silver currency. A dollar's worth of, of silver. You mean that's too much for remembrance? Before, before, before Yah's, before Yah's holy place, that's too much for y'all? You always, but, but think of how much you spend going out to the club. You understand how much you spend on, on gals and hoes and, and clothes and, and shoes and sneakers and so forth and so on. You know, people often say, oh, well, you know, Jah don't need, you know, God don't need no money. Of course he don't need no money, fool. You understand, but you need to have a remembrance. Think about it. You understand? Who's going to remember you? I mean, who's going to remember you that can really help you out? Mm -hmm. Who's going to remember you? Let's get this picture right here. Let's see if we have this this uh, this photo right here. Um, who's going to remember you? Let's go to the shekel for a moment. Let's just kind of show you show you what we mean by the currency. So you see right there, the Israelites, even in the wilderness, had their own currency. Niggas today don't even have their own currency. Think about that. You understand? Even in Jewish community, they have their own economic system. You understand? And some niggas talking about, you know, they got a Bible of hip-hop and a Bible of this and purpose-driven that. And, uh, you know, cattle be, can be driven for any purpose. Mm -hmm. and that's why they got... You understand, understand that God is a golden calf, that God is a bling bling. They make these things that they make out of their hands that represent things that God created. So they deny God and they make things out of their own hands and they worship the things that they have made. And guess what? They think that they're wise. You understand, they think that they're wise in the doing and the doing thereof. But the main purpose of the shekel, while that comes up, we'll 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 bring up the photo when it when when it when it's found on this drive and everything. We'll bring that up to you. You understand? It's it's for a remembrance. See, people keep missing the main the main word, the key words for a remembrance. 